Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I am joined today by Pastor Dan Slagle, who just finished our Surrender series. Pastor Dan, thank you so much for being here today. Sure. Now, there were a lot of questions sent in again, and some of those questions were um, about surrendering to the government. And we addressed a lot of those questions a couple weeks ago. So for those of you that sent in questions regarding... Uh, how Christians should surrender the government. I want to refer you back to our postscript from two weeks ago with Pastor Ken. Now, uh, for our first question, we have someone who is wondering um, about your challenge at the end of your sermon. You said uh, that find a verse where Jesus tells us to start a rebellion on our own. And so this person wanted to know, uh, if we are not supposed to start a rebellion, well, what about war? Um, If it weren't for the civil war, she says we'd still have slavery. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I still stand by my initial statement (laughs) that you won't find Jesus telling us to start a rebellion. Having said that, though, um, I think there is a difference between pursuing justice. Mm -hmm. Slavery, obviously, was a justice issue. And uh, living a surrendered life. you can look at any number of characters, figures from the civil rights era who lived surrendered lives to Jesus Christ, but nevertheless pursued justice. And uh, Martin Luther King, of course, primary among them, um, did so nonviolently, right. no intention of starting a war there. So uh, I, I think it is certainly possible to uh, demonstrate those relational fundamentals that we talked about, like-mindedness, sympathy, compassion, humility, love, right. and still pursue justice. I think God has an expectation that we pursue justice, that um, the, the two are not mutually exclusive. Right. It's not an either or. No. We have to choose one or the other. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and with this as well, I mean, I don't think it, it would be up to one person to decide if we're going to start a war or not. Right. Right. Uh, I don't know that any one person has that capacity. Right. Uh, maybe there have been a few no. figures in history who've, sure. you know, brought those things about. But, uh, yeah, um, I, I don't know that that's uh, something we're going to bump up against sure. in our experience. Right. Now, um, something that is a little bit more personal, mm-hmm. someone had a question about self-defense. Yeah. Uh, they said, how do you reconcile self-defense for yourself or for your family or for a loved one um, when it comes to submitting and surrendering your life to Jesus? How do you reconcile those two things? Sure. Well, uh, I think one needs to, uh, first of all, take into consideration context. Sure. You know, context is everything. And uh, Jesus' uh, mission to save the world obviously was not about Mm self-defense. He submitted himself to the will of the Father in order to bring about salvation for humanity. When you're talking about protecting your family from someone who intends to do evil or violence upon them, we're talking apples and oranges here. These are not the same sort of things. And so I do not see a prohibition against protecting. I don't think the call to submit and to surrender is to be a doormat. That, that's not what that means. Right. As I pointed out at the beginning of the sermon, it is to be surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus and uh, to obey Him in all circumstances. I don't know that obeying Jesus precludes me protecting my family. I, I, I don't see that. Sure. So it's, but it's, I mean, it's almost a case-by-case situation. It's it much is. more gray than we would I, like to think it is. I, I was talking to a guy uh, just a few moments ago. Uh, he was wanting to know, when have we crossed the line? When, do we, when, when are we supposed to you know, engage, so to speak? And I said to him, th- th- there's no manual on this. Right. You know, it's not like, no. you. okay, one, two, three, now four, go. Okay. Uh, it is a case-by-case and, and that's why you need the body of Christ. You know, there's, there's wisdom in Absolutely. a lot of counselors. Uh, we need to measure, we need to weigh, we need to think, we need to pray, we need to talk. Uh, 
and then make a decision as best we can right. about what Jesus would do in a given situation. But uh, I'm not going to be able to give somebody a manual and right. say, here is the answer. Sure. So uh, someone was wondering, um, again, going back to your, um, your challenge to try to find scripture where Jesus tells us um, that it's okay to rebel. And so uh, this person brought up the situation where Jesus was driving out the money changers from the temple. And they wanted to know, was that an uprising? Was that a form of rebellion? If not, what was it? It was not a call to uprising okay. uh, by any stretch. Again, context. Who is the main player here? Well, it's Jesus, the Son of God. Sure. Uh, the divine. God has prerogatives that we do not have right. as disciples, as right. human beings. And Jesus was enacting a uh, divine judgment upon those who were desecrating mm -hmm. the house of God, the temple. So that changes things immediately. Sure. You know, that's Jesus, this is us. Our motives are uh, always going to be questionable. Our methods frequently questionable. Right. Uh, our understanding of the situation uh, can uh, have questions that go along with it. And so there again, um, there is wisdom in the counsel of many. And that's why we need the body of Christ. That's why we need God's word to look at situations and be able to discern. Is, is this social justice? Is, is this self-defense? Uh, is this something that only God right. is allowed to do? Is this a, a divine prerogative that he reserves for him? Mm -hmm. Self. And, and I think that instance certainly is a, is a case of that. Right. Jesus was not rallying the troops. He, he actually was sneaking around, yeah. you, you know, prior right. to doing it. He didn't right. have a horde following him there. So, yeah, um, very different altogether. Sure. Divine judgment, not so much rebellion or uprising. Right. Absolutely. So uh, for our final question, uh, this person wrote in wanting to know how, how can we help others <laughs> submit to Jesus? Are there any... Um, methods or practices that we can we can do individually to help others to submit to Jesus? Well, um, as the old saying goes, you know, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Right. Um, we cannot make anyone submit. Right. Uh, we can share our witness mm -hmm. of our experience with Jesus Christ. We can live out the surrendered life before people. But at the end of the day, every individual has to decide for him or herself, is this the route that I want sure. to take? Uh, to force someone to submit would be about as contrary to the That's message right. Right. <laughs> as one could, could be. Yeah. And so uh, that, that's really not our responsibility. We, um, as I say, model it, witness it, um, give examples of it but each person has to decide for him or herself. Right, well that kind of is what distinguishes Jesus as king from every other king with, every other king would force oh, absolutely. their subjects to bow with Jesus. No, it's, he calls people to himself and he draws them in uh, with loving kindness, but he never forces anyone. Right, the difference between the gospel and ISIS. Right. Y you know, y you don't uh, lead someone to Jesus at the threat of their life. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, sure. Pastor Dan, for being yeah. here. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.